from my perch. <laughs> Hi, Heather. Thank you so much for agreeing to be on my channel and to share your story of self-realization. I really think that a lot of people are going to resonate with your story and be very interested in what happened in your life afterwards. So um, just to get us started, if you could kind of, you know, give us a background of, you know, who you are, where you've been, and to the point that, you know, you met with David Bingham, that would be wonderful. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, I think everybody's deepest longing is to find out who they are. And um, so my experiences have taken me to many places to try to find what, you know, people perceive as God. And um, the the biggest one, all my life really, but the biggest one I think was when like about 15, 16 years ago when a language came through when I was singing karaoke. And um, I didn't know what it was and it took me a long time to figure out what it was. And then, well, I think I, I, I found out what it was when I gave up the search for wanting to know what it was. Um, and yeah, fr from there, my whole life changed, the whole trajectory of my life changed. It, this language became my best friend and every time I spoke it, it, it just felt good. It just, it just felt different. Like it was, it was trying to speak to me and, um, yeah. And then, um, and it's, uh, I had this kind of a trauma happen where my husband died suddenly on my front lawn. And after that, it, it just blew up. The language just was like, whoa. And I was saying that all of a sudden I knew, I mean, I knew I was some sort of a healer all my life, but I didn't quite know what that looked like. Right. So um, after he died, that's when I, I really started doing the healing work. I opened up a practice and went on my way uh, and yeah, I was doing profound healings then and then stopped and had another experience in life and then came back to it. And then I, yeah, so then I went on David uh, Bingham's channel and um, yeah, that was really good because then I st started to um, attract the people who were really interested in this work and wanted to do the work. That makes a lot of sense. So when you say, just for our audience's sake, when you say the language, what you speak from what I understand is Aramaic, which is yeah. the language that Jesus spoke, right? And does that fall in the category of what you would consider kind of like this light language um, category of, you know, kind of like a channeled message from source that transmits, you know, knowledge and frequencies and wisdom and all of those things? Yeah, I, I I don't really. It's it's interesting on this journey where everybody wants to give something a name, yeah. and I, I don't. I've I've never been into labels. Like in the mental health care team, you know, they give you a label and and you identify with that label your whole life. Yeah. Okay. You, you know, there's there's even in the mental health. You know community where you're a subscriber, consumer. I, I remember going one time um, to a resource center for, you know, just, just to get signed up for a course that was at a discount. And they said, well, are you a consumer? And I was like, sorry, a consumer? Yeah, like, do you have a mental health issue? And I'm like, no. <laughs> like, yeah. And it's it's so silly. These like, con what am I consuming? Like. <laughs> like all these terms and so I don't I try to stay away from labels but getting back um to your question I see it as a direct source a direct link to I speak the language instant connection to source I've never really traveled around in the astral I've never had experiences with angels or masters or anything like that I I, I just always had this instant connection but didn't listen to it and, and same with my language 
same with the Aramaic. This I only found this so through synchronicities when I said, okay, okay, spirit, I'm ready. I'm done with people asking me what this is, you know, yep. and, and it, it's a language. It's it's a language that connects you instantly. We all have it. We're all capable of, of connecting instantly. We don't have to, um, you know, say all these, go through all these rituals. It's It should be right there. Yep. I, I love that you said that you don't like to put a label on it. I'm um, and in my journey, I've had a lot of mystical experiences. I spent a lot of time in the etheric and the astral realms. And um, as I was sharing with you earlier, when because I came from this really heavy background of, you know, almost 20 years of doing all of this deep inner work. I kind of got lost in that whole world. And I feel yeah. like I was chasing experiences for a very long time, like chasing to, to get the experience. But what I failed to see and what David Bingham helped me to see, and I'd like to get your take on this, is uh-huh. that there you are it you are everything you are already whole you are already self-realized there are these there are not these levels of consciousness there is only the you know the i am the the self does not exist and when that happened there was this complete paradigm shift of oh i spent 20 years meditating and seeing angels and, you know, being like, a you know, having all this psychic phenomenon. And there was a lot of confusion for me. Uh, mm-hmm. Did that happen for you? Or do you have any thoughts on any of that? <laughs> no, I, I, I never really had psychic. I've never really experienced any of that. I just always had this knowing. Yeah. And, and, and people, the thing of, with me is I would know, and then I tell people and, they they just weren't at the level where they wanted to hear it. So I'd be like, no, no, like I said on David, like you, you gotta know. And it was like, no. So I just kept getting my life with being rejected. And when I talk about experience, they're they are not mystical experiences. My experiences were getting into relationships where you you, you know my wound would attract, you know, another wounded soul. And my experiences were really for my soul's evolution to, to heal this, these, this woundedness or this abandonment wound that had, you know, been with me for a while. And, um, so each time I had a a relationship experience, it would bring me home. It would just bring me back and say, okay, we're done with that. Okay. Yes. Okay. We're I get it now. I get it. I get it. You, You know, back to me again, back, back to me. And every time I came back to me, I connected more. Yep. To 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 source and 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 really to discern what is source, what is as people call the ego. I don't call it ego. I call it the wound, and people call it whatever they want. But when the wound talks, um, it's it's kind of a trickster, you, you yep. know. So and when source talks, it's not source. Source tells you the truth, and sometimes you don't want the truth because the wound is just too loud, and it's like no. And the fear of, you know, the fear of losing love is is sometimes would turn up and I'd be like, no, I don't think I can do it. And then, you know, but now it's, it's very different. Now I listen only to my higher self and I see, I see higher self as in God, whatever you want to call it. I see it as your higher self is the director, the director of, of you. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, and the director connects you to all that is, has been, whatever will ever be the consciousness, intelligence. And in my work that I do now, that's what I connect to. I just, people want to know things. I'm like, okay, uh, I'll go in and find out. And sometimes it takes a couple sessions. Sometimes it takes four or five. People have got to understand that this, your woundedness, your traumas weren't created overnight, your patterns. So they're not going to leave overnight. Yeah. But if you do it, if you do it in a conscious way and you accept where you are um, in your heart center and accept, okay, this, this is where I am right now. And, and it's okay. 
you will evolve quicker than saying, I want to be where she is. You know, I, I want that experience or you, you have to just be really humble. Okay. Yep. And just like, okay, okay, I know I'm not there. Well, just love where you are, because if you love where you are, you will heal faster and you'll get to the next shift, as I call them, the shift quicker than wanting to be somebody you're not. Did, haven't you done that your whole life? Like, <laughs> you know, you, but let's just get real. Like, and when you talk about being that, like the self, well, yeah, like you just want to be who you are and who you are is, is, you know, infinite love, infinite intelligence. And that intelligence comes through and that's what helps you with discernment. But the biggest thing that helps you is healing those wounds, like ma making those choices are, I mean, those, those choices. And for, forget about all the new cages <laughs> movement, as I heard somebody coin it, new cage, like, no, get out of that. You know, you, people will say a lot of silly things that I don't agree with and I don't make things complicated. It's very simple. That's heal your wounds. And, when, and as I'm talking to um, another fellow traveler and they're coming to me, I will, I can navigate the, the language comes in and we help them navigate. They I don't keep them too long on a story. I, I just get to the root of it. I really like to just Let's get to the root of it. You had this all your life. Like, you don't want to talk about this anymore. Let, let's tell me, like, tell me the main thing that's going on. And then from there, we go into the field and I see everything. I don't see everything right away because I have to work on the brain first. I have to make sure that whatever comes up in the body, the brain uh, uh, was going to be okay integrating it. Okay, yeah. Pro processing yeah. it. Because if there's so much going on in the brain and something comes up in the body, then it's going to be too confusing and you might give up. So, so little bits at a time. And then as we clear, the more stuff surfaces and more stuff surfaces and it's, it's beautiful. And how, how nice is it? You know, I don't know about you, but anytime I've gone to, you know, mine accumulated in my tummy where I'd always have this tightness. And um, every time I'd go to my osteopath, I'd, I'd say, oh God, is there, did you notice any difference? Oh my gosh, yes, Heather, your, you know, your liver completely like it's so good now, or you know, like, and I want it, I want someone to tell me, do you notice a difference? Because I notice a difference in my overall well-being, but physically, am I okay? And and yeah, I and that's what I do with my clients is is say, yes, there's a difference. Like when I go into your field, I'm not stuck here. Like and don't you want to see progress? Because it makes you feel good. It makes you want to keep going, right? Yeah. And I, I can relate to what you're saying with healing the wound. Like you said, a lot of people have different meanings for it. I probably would call it like the the ego and the identification to the ego. Mm -hmm. So I think that I relate to this in that there is an unwinding that happens whenever you realize the true self, whenever you realize the truth, once you have seen it, you cannot unsee it. And there is an unwinding that happens where you let go of all these attachments, these identifications, you could call them wounds, you could call them the stories, but there's yeah. almost, there's an energetic tie into your body mind. And the more that you work through that, purify that, disidentify with it and go back to the source of who you are, then the energy just becomes lighter and lighter and lighter, right? And you get more in touch with your deepest and truest nature, which is infinite. And, you know, this, this amazing field. Um, and what I like about you is that you know you have this modality and that you don't like to label right that you you um you didn't really get too attached into the the different stories that can happen in the metaphysical world which can pull you away from source like the direct source um because that's you know what i was saying earlier 
man, did I go down some rabbit holes? <laughs> yeah. With, I hear, you know, I hear people looking too, away, yeah. you know? Yeah, for sure. You, you, you know, I mean, source energy is, I don't know, that that's the top. <laughs> that That's the big cheese, I say. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, like the angels, all those realms are, they're good, but they're not, they're not source. They're, they're not the whole, the one, you, you know, they're, and it's okay. There's no judgment of whether you play around the angels in that realm. That that's fine. Whatever you want to do. But I've ne I have never done that. I've always just kind of directly gone to to source. Um, and really, my only downfall was I just didn't listen. <laughs> I wasn't yeah. a great stu I wasn't a great student because you know I I did have that woundedness thing that I needed to work through. That that. Abandonment. So, um, and I really didn't have any mentors either. Every time I knew it, I, I it was kind of, I didn't trust myself enough right. to believe right. believe what I heard. So now, now when they say know thyself, trust thyself, I so get that. Like know thyself and trust thyself, because when you start to trust source, well, then you don't trust anything else. <laughs> no, you don't trust anybody else's opinions or whatever. Like it's like no, no, I. I, I know it's going down like you do you I'll do me and and that's kind of why I never really I never really um, subscribe to any kind of organized anything yeah. I, I I didn't like groups I, di I didn't like I don't I never felt like I needed an army I never felt like I needed I don't know more people to prove who I am I just needed me and and that was always I, I knew where my army was. I, I I knew, you know, I knew I did know that. It's just again, my biggest thing was I didn't listen. And but now I I listen and 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 another really thing is like a lot of people say, well, how do you, how do you protect yourself when you get up there? But I I don't protect myself. I don't come up out feeling exhausted. I don't I I don't do any shielding exercises. Because why I'm safe, <laughs> like, like my best, my best protection in life is quality of life. I eat healthy, you know, I deal with stuff when it comes up and I, I don't know. I just, I live a good life. I don't eat, drink or smoke dough or don't like drink yeah. or yeah. I don't do anything outside of myself to fulfill any, any needs, you know, um, you know, it was only kind of, I, I guess my, yeah, this dark I, chocolate, dark chocolate. Yeah, dark chocolate, I like that. <laughs> that. That's my weakness, but you know, my, my, probably my addiction was, you, you know, trying to, this abandonment thing, trying to looking for love in all the wrong places. That was my, my biggest thing, but again, not, not anymore. Finally, it's like, got that one under wraps. <laughs> So yeah, so yeah. You said a lot of different things that I'd like to touch on. Um the protection piece first of all. Mhm. Mm uh you know, I used to be a lady with the sage and the crystals and you know all that and, and walking into um doing readings or energy healing work or whatever thinking that I needed to protect my energy. But I found that all of that was a complete illusion because it's all part of the one field, right? And whatever you believe, you put power to, and therefore it manifests itself. So from my experience there, as long as you live in that eternal now and that you're connected to that beingness and you're resting in that beingness, there's, you know, there's nothing that could possibly touch you, right? So I totally agree with you on that. Yeah, I mean, I love, I love crystals. I have them and um, I, I, I think they're pretty and I like them. I like the feel of them. I like, I don't know. I think they do have an energy, but I don't, I don't rely on them. Like they're, they're there and I like them. I want them around me sometimes because I like them, not because I need them because, and, and, you know, if they're helpers, well, they're helping me on a level that I don't know <laughs> because, you know, um, but but yes and 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 I again there's another thing people will say is how do you not take on people's stuff well 
it's not my stuff. <laughs> I, I, it's I their story. I have, yeah. I've already been through that chapter. Okay, take it on people's stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, the projections and things like, no, that's another myth too, where people say, I do this energy work and oh my God, I take off, I feel all there. And I was like, I, I don't, I don't get the feels. Like when I'm working with a client, I just do my job. I, I'm not attached to anything. I just do my job. Yep. I love that. And I think that I'm, you know, in my experience, I struggled with that because there was the belief that tied me to that, that was, that was real, you know? Um, and then the the crystals, I agree with you. You know, I, I have crystals all over my house too. I'm not going to say that I don't, um, no. but you don't have to have one strapped to your chest saying that the, and believing that this is going to protect me against X, Y, and Z. <laughs> no, because, because once you find the fit, the formula, really, once you're connected to source, like oh, all you have to do, if you want something and ask, I, I ask for what you want. Um, and it will come in. And if it doesn't come in, that it's really not, it's it's not what you need, okay? Yep. So I, I just ask and then it's like, whoa, okay. Synchronicities, now I'm in alignment. And sometimes I'll go through a crazy thing where I think I want something and I, I'll energetically connect and think, oh, no, why is this not making me feel good? And I'll spin around for a while and be obsessive and then boom, all of a sudden clarity comes, I'm like, Oh my God. Thank God it wasn't physical with somebody physical. Thank God it was just an energetic shit like <laughs> thing I yeah. had to go through. Cause now I don't, now I'm not embarrassed. Now I don't have to tell people, oh, you, you know, so, but, but I, I would have gone through that just to end a cycle of something. Like, yeah. Okay. Okay. I, under yeah. I understand any th experiences I have now, which, you know, there aren't, aren't really. They, they're come energetically, not with physical relationships, but energetic relationships. Mm -hmm. Which is so nice because, you know, you don't have that embarrassment like, oh, God, why did I get involved in that? Like spirit will say, OK. Listen. Yeah, <laughs> like, that, that, that makes sense. Yeah, um, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> the other thing that you touched upon was, you know, kind of how you basically have a clean lifestyle, you know, to, to keep this, this, um, uh, this vessel pure, as pure mm. as it can be in this, mm -hmm. um, this body mind existence. I also went through this where there were, there were a lot of things, even after self-realization that I had to, what, that I recognized as things that I did to escape and numb myself because they were, they were my go-tos for many, many years. Um, and, you know, I had the different stories, but then after I let go of the stories, there were still these habits, I'll call them to, you know, yes. myself, like alcohol was a really good one. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, just, you know, sometimes not eating the right things. So what I went through was, you know, letting go of, any of those things, and I call them, you know, like the poison, spit out the poison that uh -huh. is making you sick. And there was like a purification of the body that happened, the body mind, and it felt, the vessel felt much more clearer mm -hmm. and, you know, conducive to this energy because, you know, I, I would have these, these great glimpses and I would be very connected and then, you know, drink some alcohol, uh, you know, smoke something that you weren't supposed yeah. to or something like that. And, you know, you would kind of like, it was so apparent that you were taking several steps back that it was like, this is not your frequency. This is not, you know, a way to connect if you want the highest and greatest path. No, I'm not telling you I've always been like this. I've, I've had those experiences, too. Yeah. Yeah. Where, yeah. Again, like, I don't know. I've had to be knocked on my head and a couple yeah. times like, no, okay, okay, I don't get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Um, and, and you're, you know, I mean, even following all the fads, people saying, don't eat this and don't eat that. And this is, no, you're like, you listen, once you, once you, 
clean out, then you listen to your body. Your body will tell you what it likes, what it doesn't like. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, you're not going to say that it's best to be a vegan or no. only you got to listen to what this body mind, what feels opens you up and what feels the best in the body. So yes, um, I totally agree with that. Because if you're listening to everybody else, then you're still not listening to yourself. Exactly. Like your yourself has all the answers, but that's why in my practice, when people ask me questions, I'll say, no, I'll always take it back to them. What do you think? And if people are really desperate, like they just don't know, then I will give them the answer, but I won't give them the answer all the time. I'll, yep. I'll, I'll just like give them, give them an answer sometimes. And then I'll say, what do you think? And you know, people are, they have, they're more aware than they think they are. Like did they do have a knowing they just, like I was on the journey, didn't trust it. Right. They're like, okay, yeah, I know I'm not supposed to drink a bottle of wine tonight, but I'm still going to do it. That's why you have to use your free will to be like, okay, I recognize it. There is awareness around it. I am consciously making the higher choice not to take this path. And then once you see how that impacts your life, then, you know, you just can't go back. You can't. Well, well no. And then with the traumas, they know something's right, not right. They know they're yep. stuck. They've done everything. And they just can't get it. What is it? And 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 I feel like so much compassion for those people because what their experience is is actually true. It's 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 not their fault. It's in their field. Um and it's really it's really hard to find something yourself because it was created in survival and um survival you get very attached to survival. So you need somebody else outside of yourself to, to clear it. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, quick question for you. I'm curious if you have any spiritual practices still, like, you know, things that you do like meditation, um, mindfulness, do you do those things or what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I, I do it in the morning and at night. Um, and, um, I take like, or er, like, I, I, I love gemotherapy. I like, um, holistic, like homeopathic remedies. You know, if I'm, if I'm going through something or something's just a little off, I'll, I'll take a homeopathic remedy. I, I like, there's a line called gemotherapy and I, and I like, the essence of figs. I like the essence of bribes, like black currant. Like there's some things my body crave. Okay. If I'm going through something, but it, but it, it's all natural stuff. You, you know, um, if you want to practice like magnesium, calm myself down and, um, just, and, and nature, I'm, I'm always walking. I have a kayak too. So I'm either on the water or I'm in nature with my dog and i thank goodness for my dog because you know <laughs> yeah we, we we do a lot of things together we swim together she's she's a lab and um she loves the water just like me and um yeah i do when, when i feel like oh I, I, my body will just tell me you, you know i and i yeah those are my practices i do meditate like at night time i'll just lay there and just clear or I'll just go into the, you know, the light, the blue, the, the, it's kind of like an indigo light, like I close mm -hmm. my eyes and I'm like, and it just waves me and I'm like, oh, so beautiful. <laughs> like, that's my high. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> you know, my high is that like, I, when I go into someone's field, I used to see it, but I don't see it anymore. I, I, um, I'm past like seeing it. I, I just instantly connect and, and do my job. It's so. Yeah, I, I do have those practices. Yeah, and it, and and like I said, I get excited over over uh, eating. Like I don't know about yeah. you, but I love food. And then you know, I get excited in the morning to have a my green tea, and I do love coffee uh, every now and then. I love coffee. Be before somebody said, "No, you can't drink coffee, Heather. It's not good for your system, your nervous system." And anyway, I believed them, and then I drank decaf, which wasn't great, but. But, but my body loves coffee and, and I get excited to have coffee <laughs> and I yeah. get excited to make my banana pancakes. Okay. Like, 
Well, I mean, that's, I think you touch upon something that is very true. It's, it's living in the moment and cherishing those ordinary, precious moments. Krista, that is it. Showing up for the moment, um, giving the moment unconditional love. Okay. Yeah. Like that's the moment. And, and living with a dog is, is so beautiful because. There's nobody happier in the morning than a dog. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, the, she follows me around waiting, waiting till I go through my routine. And I, you know, I do lift some weights and stuff like just to get, just to get strong. Cause when I do my healing work, I use my hands a lot. That's how I navigate. So my arms have to be strong. Huh. Um, that's why I started lifting the, the weights and well, also to train my dog how to walk properly. Cause she's 75 pounds strong. Oh, <laughs> so, cool. So, so, so really this journey, like it helps you get in shape because you need to do things to be strong. Yep. Not just mentally strong, physically strong. Yes. So yeah, I think, I think practices every day are, are good and that you actually want to do them. Like there's sometimes I'm, if I'm tired or, and I get up and say, I'm not lifting those weights. I don't lift the weights. I, I'm not someone who says you have to, if you don't lift these weights, I'm like, no, I'll lift them when I damn well feel like it. And then it passes and I want to. Yeah. yeah. I think it's it's about not force, it's about power. You, you know, like people really discipline themselves to the point where they override their body's own natural like processes. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, they they attach to the the practices and and being so attached to the practices, they they lose the flow of life and how life maybe doesn't want you to lift weights one day, for example. So no. I've definitely no. been there. I'm I'm a no. very regimented and my friends know me as kind of like she's you know, she's very predictable and she would probably do the same thing over and over. So, you know, the universe has really sent me that lesson to be more of more in flow with life itself, you know? Yeah. Yes, exactly. And to when you're tired, you rest. Okay. You, you don't give your body saying, oh, I'm healing something right now. I'd like you to rest. And I'm like, okay, well, that's good. I, you know, I'll, I'll rest. I mean, do you think about a butterfly? Do you think it flies in the rain? Yeah. <laughs> no, what would it do to its wings? Like I watch butterflies when it starts to rain a bit and they're like, oh, I'm going to cower down here for a bit. And I'm like, oh, I, I don't know. I watch all the silly things. I, I hug maple trees and stuff like that. I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, oh. you're my kind of gal. I'm the same way. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I go out there and give my maple tree and my front lawn a kiss. Hey, how you doing there, maple tree? I put my third eye on it, and it's like, okay, nice thing. Oh, I can feel the energy. If I'm ungrounded, all I do is go hug her. Yeah. And it's like, you can feel it going. Yeah. Hey, I'm good. I'm good. It occurs to me that, you know, we all have our own pathless paths to the same destination. And that we're all, you know, we're all different expressions of that, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of like thinking about your path and how you, you just intuitively started speaking this language. And then you, you were on this journey and then you, you know, poof, straight to source, you know, you didn't take any detours to, with that. Um, and then you have this beautiful connected life, it sounds like. And then, you know, like I talked about before, I, I kind of took some detours. I did all this stuff in the astral and etheric, and then I had a corporate America job at the same time. And then, you know, I was talking to my husband yesterday and, and he was saying, you know, he just wants to go straight to the root. He doesn't want any of the magic, but it's all the same thing that we're talking about here, right? It's all about realizing your true nature no matter what pathless path you take to get there yeah as long as, long as the you know you get there that's what i say i mean soon there'll be a time you know because the energies are frequencies are getting stronger you can't deny it but soon there'll come a time when we won't be talking about astrology like astrology we won't be talking about all the things these are all just tools it, like it will we'll just be it'll be like oh yeah 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 manifested this like like you, yeah. you know it'll, it'll be a different 
conversation. We, we, they won't be so like, oh my God, you're not going to believe it. You're not going to know what I saw today, and what I did. It'll just be so common. Yeah, right? it's yeah. like the the everyday synchronicities, the everyday magic yeah. will just be the norm. And I think that that's that's how I feel when I when I really rest in that effortless being. It's like it's just pure magic. It you know? is, and then it is, and you don't have to be a, a water sign, or you, you don't <laughs> don't have to be that. You just be you, like exactly, <laughs> and just um. One thing that I felt was really important for people to understand that, you know, I kind of, I work with people or I have good friends that I share these thoughts with is that there are no levels. You're already there. It's just, you're covered up with your story and your identifications. And yep. it's just a matter of healing all that back, you know? Yep. I love one it. Sweet, one sweet shift at a time. <laughs> you know, that that's what it is. So do you have anything else to add, dear friend? <laughs> no, I, I just, you know, just, it, it's just really cool to know that when, like when I'm working with people and they come and they say, whatever sometimes it takes two sessions three sessions four sessions i i don't know but it's really nice to go into their field and find the trauma mm -hmm. and it's really nice when i come back and say listen this is what i saw and they like oh god i had a feeling something i knew it because i never liked this or you know it's it feels so good there's so much sexual trauma in the body i can tell you that if someone were to say what's the most you see it's sexual trauma yeah so so much that, um that and um grief oh yeah grief uh yeah this there, there's a lot of grief stored and it, it's sneaky because it's stored in different places i mean so, someone who even someone who had their tonsils out uh i see it there like it's everywhere, little tiny pieces everywhere. It's like, I'm, I'm like a little investigator, like, yeah, <laughs> what, who, you know, this intelligence, I say that guides me, that is me that I've connected to, like, as I say, like the higher self is the director. And then it says, okay, you got this Heather. I'm like, yeah, I got this. It's like, it leaves. And then it like just connects me. And so it's like, okay, when I'm in the field, I just close my eyes and go into a trance and it takes me exactly where I need to go. And what's so beautiful is, is that I just get to come back and say, it's okay. Like we got that. Okay. Yeah. Or some people will say, well, it's my heart. Like I have a heart condition. What did you find out about my heart? I'm like, we didn't even get to your heart, sweetheart. Like, holy, like, do you know how much stuff was in there? <laughs> I know. Like, just, just be patient. Like if I could tell anything, it's just let go of outcome. Just be patient. Yeah. You know, trust. Just trust that it's a process. And like I said, be be grateful and accepting of where you are in your heart center at the moment. And that will help you surrender. And then we'll get to that clogged, clogged artery or ventricle that I see quicker. Yep. That is absolutely beautiful. And um, I can't thank you enough for this conversation. I know that it will bring clarity to folks and yeah. I will add in your contact information into the video in case someone wants to reach out to you. And um, thank you again. Yeah. It, gosh. it was so wonderful to meet oh, you. Gosh, yes. Thank you so much, Chris. It's been, it's been a pleasure. It's been, it's been effortless really. Hey, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that word. Yeah. Take care. Yeah, that, that's what I like. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.